Gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Infantryman's Guide. This episode we're going to be looking at the bayonet and some of its uses on the modern day battlefield. Now, one thing I have to uh, lay out first and foremost is get out of your mind this notion that bayonets are only used in some sort of revolutionary or Civil War style bayonet charge. We're not talking about that, okay? There's uh, many additional uses outside of that traditional old Civil War style bayonet charge for this weapon, okay? This is a tool, it's an accessory to you to make you a full spectrum warrior, right? It's just one tool among many. The bayonet has been around for generations and it's not going anywhere, okay? Um, first, let's talk about the uh, psychological aspect of the bayonet. Absolutely terrifying. Whether that's friendly or enemy, there's almost nothing more terrifying than the enemy or you closing with on the enemy, all right, with fixed bayonets. Once your enemy sees that, they see that mounted bayonet, they know it's fucking business. They know they're either going to stay and fight and they will die, or they need to get the hell out of Dodge because you are coming. The psychological factor associated with a bayonet is just unbelievable, okay? If you're in that attack position and you're fixing bayonets, there's nothing that signifies to your men more than, hey, we are taking this objective one way or another than clicking on that bayonet at the end of that muzzle. So, 100% guys, mental aspect of the bayonet is there. It, it instills fear into the enemy once they see you closing with, okay? And then it also puts that idea in your man's head, hey, we're moving out, we are taking this enemy by fire maneuver, and we're repelling their assault by fire and close combat. We will take that objective, we will kill the enemy, okay? So that is the psychological aspect of the bayonet. Ask yourself one question. If you're gonna be executed, would you rather be shot or would you rather be stabbed? 99% of you are going to say you'd rather be shot than stabbed, all right? And that is a psychological factor when you're talking about a somebody, a opposing enemy force closing with on you, all right, with a fixed bayonet, all right? There's just something about it. The bayonet is just a, a mind-terrifying weapon system, okay? Uh, so go back to World War II, start of World War II. Obviously, we, uh, we use bayonets like this in the uh, onset that essentially look like many swords, right? Very long, um, not very maneuverable. Although in terms of, you know, using your weapon as a spear, <laughs> it's there, okay? It's, uh, it, is, it is effective. However, they did a study in, I believe, 1943, found that, uh, you know, a shortened bayonet was more practical for the individual infantrymen. So that's where we got... Uh, cut down bayonets and uh, most of the bayonets going forward were about 10 inches long, okay? Uh, they cut it down from being that long, you know, sword-like bayonet. Uh, even, even after that, they cut this down even further. Moving forward, you have the, uh, the bayonets that were used on the M14 and uh, subsequently, subsequently the M16, and uh, they looked something like this, right? Pig stickers. When I went into Iraq in 2003, I was issued a bayonet like this, all right? the uh, M7 bayonet. So, uh, you know, shorter, right? About the same size as a, uh, a fighting knife, but still maintains that long, narrow bayonet-like uh, um, design and concept. Moving forward into modern times, all right? Now, here we go. If you're thinking bayonets are obsolete, well, do you think fighting knives are obsolete? You don't, do you think grunts shouldn't have fighting knives? Because modern bayonets essentially look like modern fighting knives, okay? This is your uh, M9 bayonet. This is the uh, current issue United States Army. And uh, as you guys can see, this looks like a freaking fighting knife. And guess what? It also has the capability of mounting to the end of a, uh, a rifle, all right? So, tell me that is not an intimidating looking weapon right there, all right? If you're closing with on the enemy and he sees that, that is a freaking intimidating look piece of uh, hardware right there, okay? Nothing says more, nothing means more business than a bayonet attached to the end of a rifle, okay? So, that is your, uh, your modern bayonet. 
All right, also with your M9 bayonet, it uh, has the capability, you guys can see that little uh, groove there, that hole. You can attach the uh, bayonet to the end of the sheath and it doubles as uh, wire cutters. Okay, so cutting through enemy wire obstacles right there. You're issued a fighting knife, a bayonet, and a wire cutting device all in one simple tool, all in one weapon. United States Marine Corps has the OKC-3, Ontario Knife Company, bayonet, and it looks like a freaking K-bar, okay? A K-bar that's capable of mounting onto the end of a rifle. The M27 IAR, the uh, current service rifle of the United States Marine Corps, has the capability of, being, of mounting a bayonet still, all right? So, the Marine Corps still teaches bayonet fighting with its uh, uh, Marine Corps martial arts program. So we have not lost that, uh, that art of bayonet fighting. So, but I can't stress enough, guys, the, uh, the concept of and fear factor associated with bayonets. Now, I told you I'd tell you my own personal stories. So we're going back uh, to 2003, all right? So after the uh, fall of the uh, Saddam government and we transitioned to uh, security and stability operations, I remember specifically there was one time where... Uh, some local populace were starting to uh, get upended, all right? They were uh, getting angry and they were starting to protest and things looked like they were gonna de devolve into a riot. Um, but when that protest started to escalate and started to get out of hand, hey, we're infantrymen. We don't have riot control techniques, right? We don't have uh, OC spray on us. We don't have a bunch of tear gas on us. Hell, gas mass after the uh, invasion went back in the sea bag. What did we have? We had our freaking bayonets that were issued, okay? And you better believe that that crowd didn't give two shits about a bunch of grunts showing up with their rifles. But the second we mounted that bayonet to this rifle, all right, our M16A2s, um, shit got real for them and that crowd dispersed, okay? Especially as we started to push towards them, okay, with those, with those mounted bayonets. So again, that psychological factor with the bayonet is there, guys. Um, so that is another application of a bayonet in modern times. Another time I used a uh, bayonet, 2003, uh, 2004, the Battle of Najaf. I was there, 1st Battalion, 4th Marines in the, the cemetery, fighting the uh, Mahdi Army, led by my Tadar al-Sadr. And uh, it was a mount town from hell, guys. It was a cemetery. There were literally catacombs, tombs in every direction, uh, little small buildings. Enemy was popping up underneath us, behind us, in front of us, to left, to the right. Didn't know where the hell they were coming from. Okay, enemy could have came from any direction. At that particular time, I was issued the uh, OKC-3 bayonet. Guess what? At one time during that battle, I mounted my bayonet. Why? Because again, I didn't know where the hell the enemy was. They could pop out from the tomb right in front of me. And if they popped out, I'm probably gonna shoot them and I'm probably gonna stab them as well, okay? So I did mount my bayonet during that time. Did I have an enemy pop out right in front of me to where I did end up thrusting at six inches of cold hard steel into their chest? No, it never happened. But guess what? I was ready for it if it did. Now, some of you might be saying, point of impact shift on your rifle once you attach your bayonet. I assure you, whatever that point of impact shift is, it's still gonna be minute a man all day long. And the distance for which you are closing with an enemy with a fixed bayonet, is going to be men and a man with that rifle and that mounted bayonet, all right? Would you're, if you're entering an enemy trench and the enemy's in there and you're in close combat, most infantrymen do not have pistols. They're not issued pistols. This isn't, you know, I dream of fucking genie. You don't get every single little thing you want in a combat, okay? But what do you get issued? You get issued a freaking bayonet, all right? And uh, you, better, you better fucking believe that if I was assaulting an enemy trench, I want a bayonet mounted to the end of my rifle, okay? I'm closing with, I'm destroying an enemy by fire and maneuver, and I'm doing it however well I can, all right? What, by whatever means I can. So that is, uh, those are some applications of bayonets. So enemy bayonets, what does the enemy use? Well, typically, most armies around the world are issued bayonets to some degree, okay? Uh, a lot of the enemies of the nation still use AK's variant rifles, okay? Uh, Type 56 has it integrated, spike bayonet. So he's got his bayonet, it's already attached to his weapon. So whenever he needs it, he's just gonna fold it out. 
All right, and it's ready and it's ready to be used on you if necessary. Another bayonet, another AKM style bayonet here. Um, does that look familiar? Hey, the enemy has the, uh, the ability to use their wire cutters. All right, so we kind of took that idea from the uh, Soviets and the other comm block nations. They've always been using these for a long time now, right? So they have that capability too. They're not stupid. They use their, uh, their bayonets look like utility knives as well, all right? So, you know, just because the enemy makes it doesn't mean it's piss poor equipment. So that's something that you uh, consider. The enemy has bayonets, all right? They're gonna use them. They're closing with on you, they're probably gonna be fixed. So be ready. Attaching your bayonet is fairly simple. Most USGI bayonets attach in the same manner. Simply slide the ring over your barrel and lock the bayonet into the bayonet lug until it clicks. To remove your bayonet, simply depress the two locking mechanisms in the back and slide the bayonet off the end of the barrel. The next portion of this video will cover some basic bayonet fighting techniques. <laughs> First, let's talk about our stance. Our stance is a typical fighting stance with our feet positioned in a manner to maintain maximum balance. Think as, as if somebody was going to give you a slight push from any direction. Ask yourself, would you lose your balance or fall over? To achieve a good bayonet fighting stance, position your feet offset, one in the front and one in the rear, similar to a weaver shooting position. We also want to slightly lower our body so that we're lowering our center of gravity. The rifle is straight and slightly elevated with our bayonet facing towards the threat. To move, we're simply going to take our first step with our lead foot in whichever direction we want to move and then follow by bringing the rear foot up, returning back to our basic fighting position. This movement technique ensures that we maintain our balance even while moving regardless of the direction we're going in. Another movement technique is the balestra. It's nothing more than a hop or a series of hops to close the distance between you and your opponent. Next is a flèche. This is a fast rush towards the enemy to close the distance between you and them. The flèche usually ends with a strike. Next we're going to discuss strikes. First strike we're going to discuss is a straight thrust. To execute the straight thrust, simply thrust your rifle with his bayonet straight, forward extending your arms while simultaneously stepping forward with your lead foot and pushing off with your rear foot. Most of our power will be generated from our hips. Recover by bringing your rear foot back up into the basic bayonet fighting position. Similarly, there's a <laughs> lunge attack. In this strike, you'll fully extend the reach of your strike by completely extending your rearmost <laughs> leg out into a lunge. Recover by bringing your rear foot back up into your basic bayonet fighting position. The slash is a strike that attacks the enemy from high to low and differs from the thrust in that you are attacking from a downward direction, not thrusting into the opponent. The slash can be vertical or diagonal. The next technique is the parry. The parry is used to divert an enemy's blade that is oriented in your direction. It can be used high or low. To execute the parry, you simply hit the opposing enemy's blade to one side or the other with your own bayonet blade. This technique is usually followed up with an attack. Next is the feign attack. The feign is essentially a fake attack in order to throw your opponent off and get them to react to the feign in order to engage them with a the real strike somewhere else. The feign, simply extend your arms as if thrusting. However, there will not be any footwork. You're saving that for your real intended strike. A feign is usually followed up with a coupe or disengage in order to execute the follow-on attack. Additionally, in the event that you and your enemy's bayonets have locked up, you can execute either a coupe, which is coming over the top of their blade, or a disengage, which means you're maneuvering your blade underneath theirs. This technique may open up the enemy for a follow-on attack. In the event that the enemy comes at you with either a butt stroke or some sort of club, you can utilize your rifle to stop and block their strike. The vertical butt stroke is used to strike an opponent with the butt of the weapon vertically from low to high. Step forward with the rear foot while simultaneously driving the buttstock of the weapon into the enemy. In 
advance back forward with your now rear foot and following up with a slash. The horizontal butt stroke is similar to the vertical butt stroke. Step forward with your rear foot while simultaneously striking in a horizontal fashion the toe of the buttstock onto the enemy's brain housing groove. Follow up the strike by advancing with your now rear foot and coming back down with a slash. One thing we need to take in consideration is many adversaries on the modern day battlefield are going to have some type of gear, equipment, uh, plate care, flak vest with uh, ceramic plates inside. Okay, so are, is our bayonet going to penetrate that? Probably not. So we need to find on our target where we're going to stick that bayonet, okay? In this particular manner, plate carriers are a big thing on the modern day battlefield. You look at a video out of Ukraine. A lot of guys are running around on, well, with just standard plate carriers on both the Ukrainian side and the Russian side. So there's a lot of exposed areas, right? So off to the sides, underneath the armpit area, your neck area, your face, okay? Uh, below the belly, the groin, that's a, that's a lethal blow right there, hitting them in the pelvic girdle, okay? Those are target areas that we can use to stick our bayonet just like as if we were going to shoot them, all right? We need to be looking at our enemy and making that judgment call just like if we were going to shoot them, yeah. where are we going to be sticking this cold hard steel to fucking end his life? These are just a few basic bayonet tactics for infantrymen. In my opinion, bayonet training is an undeniable positive. It's good PT, increases violence to action, and most importantly, it builds unit cohesion. Well, that's it, gentlemen. That completes this episode of Infantryman's Guide over the bayonet. If you're liking what you're seeing, don't forget to check out my channel, subscribe. I've already done several infantry-related videos, and I plan to do several more in the future. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment. <laughs>